Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Hello, friends. My name is Miss Karen, and I'm so happy that you joined me today for our story time. We're going to sing some songs, we're going to read a couple books, and we even have some visitors today. My puppet friends are visiting. So today, we're going to talk about hibernate. That's an awfully big word, isn't it? It starts with our letter H, and it sounds like ha, hibernate. So hibernate is what some animals do in the wintertime because the weather is so cold and they have trouble finding food, so they sleep through the winter to stay alive. And we're gonna talk about that today. Before we get into our books, I want to sing our song, and it has some sign language that goes along with it. So I'm going to teach you some signs. If you want to join me, you can, or you can just sing along. You might already know this song together. So we need to know the sign for more, and it's like this. The more we get together. So together is like stirring a pot together. We also need to know the sign for happy. And we need to know friends. We have that in our song right at the beginning, friends. We're gonna say your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. So we're gonna do that one a lot. There's a second verse too, and we're gonna add, we still need more, but now we're gonna add read. So this is our book, like this, and we're gonna, these are our two eyeballs, and they're gonna read back and forth. This is read, all right? We still need together, and we still need happier, but we have to do big books, and small books, and short books, and tall books. So we've got lots of signs. If you join me each week, we'll sing this song every week. You'll get really good at it. If you wanna just watch the signs today, you can. You can replay this too and practice as many times as you want to. So here we go, it goes like this. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Cause your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Second verse. The more we read together, 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 the more we read together, the happier we'll be. We'll read big books and small books and short books and tall books. The more we read together, the happier we'll be. I hope our stories make you happy today too. All right, we are going to look at the letter H today. Ha, ha, hibernate. Let me show you how you can write your H if you want to practice. So there's a big H and a little H. So the big H starts with a tall letter and another tall side. And then we have to join them in the middle. That's our big H. Sometimes that's called a capital H. And then our little H also says and it looks like this. We're gonna start with a long, tall line, and then we're gonna come around with a hump. And that's our H, lowercase h. Ha, ha, the letter H. All right, I promised you we would talk about hibernate, and I want to show you a book. And it is called Hibernation. Oh, let's count the, the number of letters in that word. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. 
That's a long word. Can you try it with me? It says hibernation. Let's try it together. Hibernation. And it means a long winter's nap. Here we go. It is winter time. It is cold outside. Where are all the animals? Are they hiding? No, they are sleeping. Look at that little mouse. He's all curled up in a little ball. He's probably trying to stay warm because it's cold in the winter. Bats. Why are they sleeping? They sleep to stay alive. Oh, look at all the bats. They're really close together too, aren't they? Look carefully, it's white. This fox matches the snow. It is hard for animals to find food in the winter. It is hard for animals to stay warm too. He's curled up like that mouse, isn't he? When animals sleep, their bodies use stored energy until spring. That means they don't need to eat as much. In spring, the animals wake up. Here's our bear. It's time to eat. Mm, I hope he can find some food. Looks like springtime, it's green again. How would you like a long winter's nap? Can you imagine sleeping through your whole winter time? Oh, that would be strange, wouldn't it? But not all animals do that, and we don't either. But some animals do, and that helps them to stay healthy during the winter time. So I have a song for you. It's called the Hibernation Song. And I brought some friends with me, my puppets, to go along with this. And all of these animals that you're going to see in this song with the puppets, they all do the same thing. They hibernate over the winter. So my song goes like this. All right. And you can, if you catch on, you can help me sing too. Here we go. We start with this. Where is Bear? Where is Bear? Here I am. Here I am. How are you this winter? Very tired, I think. You go to sleep. Go to sleep. All right. Where is Chipmunk? Where is Chipmunk? Here I am. Here I am. How are you this winter? Very tired, I think. You go to sleep. Go to sleep. All right, who's next? Where is Squirrel? Where is Squirrel? Here I am. Here I am. How are you this winter? Very tired, I think. You go to sleep, go to sleep. Last one. Where is Bat? Where is Bat? Here I am, here I am. How are you this winter? Very tired, I think. You go to sleep, go to sleep. Oh. So all of those animals hibernate each winter in order to stay alive. And that helps them when springtime comes to wake up and find their food and live their lives. Okay, I have a story for you today too. And it is a story about a small bear. And it's called A Story for Small Bear. It was written by Alice B. McKinty and Richard Jones and Penguin Random House is kind enough to give us permission to read this book online today. A Story for Small Bear. Here we go. 
When a late autumn wind swirled into their din, after noontime nap, small bear shivered. Brrr. I smell frost in the air, Mama said. Tonight, we'll start our winter slumber. So slumber is another word for sleep or nap. Small bear snuggled close. Will you tell me stories before we sleep, she asked. I'd love that, Mama said, but there's work to finish first. If you help, no dilly, no dally, then we'll have time for stories. Small Bear got right to work. With the sun shining high, she helped Mama gather sprigs of spruce to make a soft, warm nest. So this is a spruce tree. It's like an evergreen tree, kind of like your Christmas tree. As Small Bear raked the forest floor, she came upon her favorite spot the cozy hole in the spruce tree. She rubbed her nose in the sweet smelling wood. Mmm. She scratched her back. Ah, she could dilly and dally here forever. She looks pretty comfy in that big hole in the tree, doesn't she? But then a gust of frigid air ruffled her fur and small bear shuddered. She did not like cold, not at all. Small bear thought of mama nearby. No dilly, she told herself. No dally. Wind was biting, winter knocking, and she had to save time for stories. Goodbye, hole said Small Bear, and she carried the sprigs back to line her winter bed. As the sun drifted slowly across the sky, Small Bear and Mama lumbered to the river to bathe. Small Bear tumbled into the clear, cool water and shimmied until all the dirt had been washed from her fur. Ah! She splished and splashed. Mmm. No dilly. She knew that's what Mama would say. Still, she rolled and wriggled and played some more. No dally, Small Bear thought. But it was so hard to leave. What could she do? Wind was biting. Winter knocking, and she had to save time for stories. Finally, firmly, Small Bear waded to shore. Goodbye, river, she said, and shook herself dry. Mama, Small Bear called. Where are you, Mama? At last, Small Bear saw her and ran to meet her by the berry grove. Late day sunshine warmed them as they munched on berries juicy and red. Then Small Bear saw acorns high above. Okay, we're going to turn our book so we have a tall picture. Up, up, up she climbed one branch to another and ate acorn after acorn. Mmm. She looked out from the branches. Ah, she could climb forever. But now the sun began to curve into sunset. No dilly, Small Bear reminded herself. Still, she reached for a particularly plump acorn. No dally, Small Bear said. But how could she leave? The forest was full of food and adventure. Suddenly, though, Small Bear shivered. Brrr. Sun was setting. Wind was biting. Winter knocking. And she had to save time for stories. 
Small Bear knew what to do. Goodbye, trees, she said, and down she scrambled. Mama, she called. She scampered between bushes, scurried over rocks. Mama! Mama! Finally, Small Bear saw her lumbering near the mulberry trees. Here I am, Mama, she said. And together they started down the path toward home. Oh, look, she's riding on her mama's back. They're nice. Back in their den, warm and clean and fed, Small Bear and her mama nestled down into their spruce bough nest. Did I save enough time for stories, Small Bear asked. You did, Mama answered and pulled her close. I wonder what story they'll read. In a deep rumbling voice, Mama began, once there lived a small bear who loved to play. Her mama watched as she scratched in her cozy hole. No dilly, splashed in her clear, cool stream. No dally, and adventured in the tall, tall trees. Would she save time for stories? Small Bear listened, content, because she knew how this story would end. And as the first snowflakes of winter floated down outside, she drifted off to sleep. And that's the end. I like that back page of snowflakes. We haven't seen a lot of snowflakes yet this winter, but I bet we do. So had you ever heard of dilly-dally before? That's a saying that sometimes is used when we're not supposed to be messing around or taking too long to do something. So we'll say no dilly-dallying, and that means get right to it and don't be too slow. I like how the author used that phrase, dilly-dally, in our story today, too. Well... It was nice to see you today. I'm so glad you joined me. We have a special guest that you might want to talk to today. And he's joining me right here. If you've been to story time before, you know who's right inside. It's Little Mousy Brown. And you know what? Little Mousy Brown is an animal that hibernates in the winter to stay warm. And he's also my buddy. So you need to help me wake up little Mousy Brown and we'll see how he's doing this winter because winter has just started. So here's how we wake him up. We say, wake up, wake up, little Mousy Brown. We do that two times. Can you help me? Here we go. Wake up, wake up, little Mousy Brown. Oh, oh, I'm not hearing anything yet. We better do it again. Wake up. Wake up, little Mousy Brown. Oh, I think I hear something. Let's check inside. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there he is. I see a little whisker twitching. He's stretching. He's doing this. Oh, and he's oh, yawning. Little Mousy Brown, do you want to come see the boys and girls today? I have lots of friends that want to see you. Oh, here he is. This is my buddy, Little Mousy Brown. He always likes it when I straighten out his whiskers because he likes to look his best. And we're going to perk up your ears. And he's so proud of his long tail. Hello, Little Mousy Brown. How are you today? He says he's tired. Oh, little Mousy Brown, I bet you are tired. It's winter time and you are hibernating. He says, yes. Oh, you know, I'm sorry I woke you up, but I just thought there might be some boys and girls who have missed you. They haven't seen you since, oh, maybe the summer or this fall. And they wanted to see how you're doing. So how are you doing, little Mousy Brown? Sounds like he has been snoozing away his time. Have you been hungry? He says, no, no. 
Did you eat a big breakfast before you took your snooze? He says, she yes. what did you have? What was that? Oh, peanut butter pancakes? I've never heard of those, but they sound pretty good. So with a full tummy, you're ready to sleep the winter away, aren't you? Yeah? Would it be okay if we woke you up every now and then to just say hello? He says, yes, it would be okay. All right. Well, it's so nice to see you. You are looking so nice, little Mousy Brown, and so healthy, and I am glad you are having a good winter. Do you think you'll be able to get back to sleep? He says yes. Okay, let's say goodbye to little Mousy Brown. Bye, little Mousy Brown. See you again soon. I hope you have a nice slumber, which is a nap. And we'll see you again real soon. All right. Oh, I'm going to pick a warm place for little Mousy Brown to finish his nap. Well, we are done for today. I am so glad you joined me. Don't forget that great big long word, hibernation. A long winter's nap so that you can stay alive and be ready for spring. We'll say goodbye with our goodbye song. Here we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. I'll see you next week, and we're going to talk about penguins. They're winter animals, too. Bye-bye.